A little windy out. First mag with the rival. We'll see how it does. Woo! I think it's fast, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the title, the intro, as well as the thumbnail, this is what we're going over today. It is the Canic Rival SFX S. And the S there stands for steel. So it is a steel frame gun. It basically comes in two different iterations. You have the hard chrome blinged out version that we have here. And then it also comes in what Canic calls the dark side. So a blacked out version with the nitrided finish. Uh, but the big deal of it really is that steel frame. So previously we've talked about the Rival SFX polymer frame pistol, which we will compare it to here in just a second. Um, but obviously the big change here is going to be the steel frame. There's some things that did change as well, not just related to that steel frame, which we certainly will go over. Uh, but basically this is being marketed as a competition style pistol. And as many of you guys know, I have shot competitions in the past, but I'm not a competition shooter per se. So I think I'm gonna kind of come at it as a defensive type of gun in terms of how we talk about it today. Whereas there's other reviews up on YouTube with competitive shooters talking about it. And they're going to probably take a little bit of a different angle than I will. But with all of that said, let's get up close and personal, walk through the different features of the gun, compare it to a couple different competitive options, if you will. And then at the end, we'll go over what I think of it overall. Before getting into all the details on the pistol itself, I do want to address the box that it comes with. It comes with a large Pelican style box. And if you're a competitive shooter, it is lockable and you can fly with it. I know, again, a lot of you guys will like that. It also comes with two magazines, standard capacity has this removable mag well here that we'll get to. All of these different optics plate, really, there's not any optics that I'm aware of that they don't offer a plate with it. Uh, there are, of course, aftermarket plates available as well. And then, of course, it comes with the firearm itself, the cleaning kit, as well as this right here, which is actually a tool kit. It is not a pistol for midgets. So there is that. It comes with a lot of stuff on there. Now with that, obviously we've already cleared the gun. We'll get into the feature set starting out here on the bottom and then working our way up. Like I mentioned earlier, this magwell is removable. Very easy to remove with that screw if you want to. I realize there's some uh, competitions that don't allow that. Additionally, I know some guys will carry this gun and they don't want that additional magwell printing. Uh, so you can remove it. And it does have a flared magwell built into the steel frame itself. Uh, so either way, you are good. We have these interchangeable back straps and it does come with a medium on it from the factory. Of course, I have pretty large hands, extra large in most glove sizes. So I put the large insert on there and it does help get you a good purchase and provide enough space for your support hand that really is the thing that i struggle with on some guns having uh, somewhat larger hands so it does fill in quite well we do have good texturing up front and initially when i first got that i was like oh, it's not really aggressive enough but when you actually grip into it pretty hard it bites into your hand which is exactly what you want so not mad about that texturing at all and then the texturing on the inserts is pretty solid the gun definitely doesn't move in your hand per especially rather with that uh, magwell on there, kind of giving you another point to kind of grip down on with your dominant hand. Additionally, it does come with an extended uh, magazine release. That said, I did remove the extension on there. I don't like extended controls. Anybody who's watched this channel for a while knows that. Uh, so underneath it, it just has that standard one. It is reversible. So if you want to swap it out to the right side of the pistol for your left-handed shooters, you certainly can do so. Now on the steel frame itself up here, you'll note we don't have any texturing. That's gonna be one of the few cons that I will give it. Um, I do wish there's a little bit of texturing built into the frame itself. That said, again, with the weight of the gun as well as the texturing down here, the gun doesn't move when you shoot it. I just like heavily textured guns, kind of is my thing. So continuing on up, you'll note here that we do have a nice beaver tail in there. So again, folks with large hands, you don't have to worry about getting slide bite on there uh, when the gun is firing. Uh, moving forward, you'll see that we do have a nice undercut on the trigger guard and then sort of a small double undercut on there for your support hand, meaning when you come up like that, to meet it, you do have the ability to get higher on the pistol than you otherwise would. 
trigger on this gun is phenomenal. The Canix are known for having excellent triggers. This one is probably the best of the Canix that I've shot to date, and that's saying a lot because a lot of them are really, really good, as you guys know. So we have that flat face on there, but of course we still have our striker safety, so unless that portion is pressed, the gun will not fire. So again, getting on the trigger itself, you have your uptake, and that is your wall right there. <laughs> And then the brake is super clean, super crisp. And you can see we have very, very little over travel as well. It breaks right under four pounds on my scale. When I got it in, it was breaking over four pounds, like four, point, four pounds and two ounces, but now it's just under it in the reset. That's it. Tactile, audible, and then that's the brake. I mean, guys, it's, it's just, it's excellent. It is among the best, if not the best of the strike fired triggers out there on the market as it comes from the factory i'm sure there's aftermarkets available for it i don't know why you would go with it honestly it's just it's awesome so continuing on forward we do have our slide lock and slide release you guys can see we have texture on there it is ambidextrous as you can see so you can press up on there and one thing i like about it is that even though i have a two thumbs high grip i do not accidentally actuate it like i do with some guns like sig uh, 226s for example um, no false slide lock nothing like that uh, of course you can send the slide home with it and then additionally we have our takedown lever that we'll get into here in just a second which of course is on both sides and then we have this screwed in i guess we'll call it a memory pad portion here my guess is that is for aftermarket accessories so uh, as it sits right now you can use it for a memory pad either with your trigger finger or your support hand thumb and it does have texturing on there so you can kind of get on it but i know a lot of competitive uh, pistols rather offer a gas pedal style of accessory that goes on there i'm guessing that's coming right now if it's not already out for this gun uh, because that would allow you to drive the gun even faster than you already can continuing forward on there we do have texturing on the front of the trigger guard for those of you guys that shoot like that. And uh, you know, if you do, a lot of the cool folks will tell you not to do it, but Jerry Michalik does it and he's a better shooter than I am. So who am I to say? Uh, continuing on forward, we do have a 1913 rail with four different Picatinny slots in there. And then forward of that, you guys can see that the slide itself is sort of scalloped out for weight savings. Continuing on to the slide, let's talk about those weight savings. So I discussed this in my top five guns of 2022 video uh, when talking about a previous Canic, but one thing Canic does well with their current uh, Canic pistols, not their older ones, but their current ones, is they balance the slide out. So uh, when we take the gun apart, you'll see that they do a very intentional job at centering the weight basically right around here. And what that's good for is when you're actually shooting, uh, if it's really front heavy on a gun, the gun will kind of come down like that as the gun goes back into battery. And if it's really rear heavy with no weight up front, particularly with a longer barrel like we have here with the five inch barrel, uh, then what'll happen is under recoil, it will flip more than it should. But with a nice balanced slide, it's kind of the best of both worlds there. So I do dig that up front. That scalloping does help get it into a holster. I should also mention the gun does come with a holster. I'm not a huge fan of the holster, but it's certainly better than nothing. If you're going to run it, though, my, my advice would be to loosen the tension screw because if not, it can bind up on you. Anyway, uh, continuing on back, you guys can see that we do have the weight cut wood nose there. And of course, if you guys are press checkers, you can use it for press checks either over the top or underneath. Then down here, we have sort of the matte chrome finish with the texturing on there. Barrel itself, of course, is hard chrome like the rest of the pistol. It has a nice wide feed ramp that we will talk about here in just a second. Rear sight is adjustable for windage and elevation. You guys can get a look at where it is right now. That is zeroed for 124 grain minute ammunition, so I barely had to move it to get it on target, uh, hitting point of aim point of impact at 25 yards. And of course, up front, we have a serrated uh, fiber optic sight. One of my favorite sight pictures overall, that blacked out rear with the square notch. And then of course the red, just to draw your eye to it. Works in most lighting conditions is even if you have a weapon light in the dark, you will still pick that fiber optic up. So not mad about that at all. In terms of the optics plate, we kind of already touched on it, but one th couple things I wanna talk about. Number one, they're all aluminum. And then of course, you guys can also see that several of them have this piece here on the side and what that is for is for this racking lever uh, a lot of folks kind of laugh at this over the years but from what i understand now there's several different shooting competitions that are allowing this and the open race guys are running them so canix had those out for a while now and from what i understand they're now becoming legal in uh, competitive circles so there you go if you're into that now you have it
disassembling the firearm is pretty straightforward. So of course, we're always going to make sure that we are safe and we are at this point, we're going to let it go home and you guys can see there that we do have our striker indicator. So what that's indicating is that it is pre-cocked. You guys can see the red one note on that, that I always point out that I do like about the actual uh, striker indicator there is that when you actually press the trigger, it will physically come out. You guys might not be able to see that on camera, but there's a slight movement to the rear before it goes forward. I know a lot of guys who carry inside the waistband do like that. They reholster with their thumb in that position just for a little bit of added safety, but we're gonna point in safe direction. Pull back slightly, pull down on these two tabs, and that slide will come right off. You do not have to let it go all the way forward. You guys can take a look in there and see all that beefed up steel slide assembly. There is a lot of steel going on in there. Additionally, our recoil spring and guide rod is steel. There are a number of different aftermarket uh, spring companies for folks who want to, you know, race your gun up and uh, set the springs however you like it. Again, the barrel itself has those flutes on there, uh, allowing for debris, dirt, oil, etc., to be in there and have it still function properly. And you guys can see we have that nice wide uh, feed ramp in there for feeding hollow points. And you guys can take a look in there. This gun is well used. May not show up quite as much with that hard cone finished, but there is a lot of wear in there because we put a good number of rounds through it at this point, which we'll talk about here in just a second. But reassembly is the exact same process, just in reverse. While we have the camera in the up close and personal position, I do want to kind of compare it real quick like to the polymer frame version. Essentially, they are identical with, of course, a polymer frame. One big thing that folks like myself uh, do like about the steel frame versus the polymer frame, not a huge issue on the polymer frame per se, but one thing a lot of polymer pistols do have is this piece right here. Uh, and that kind of can dig into your hand. Additionally, it doesn't allow as much room as the steel frame has here for your support hand. You guys can see there's just a huge difference there in my hand in terms of room for the support hand. And this is with the large back strap in there. So I do prefer the grip on the Rival S for sure, but otherwise pretty damn similar in terms of the design of the pistol overall, just with that polymer frame uh, versus the steel. Additionally, I realize we always have new folks here on the channel, so I want to compare it with a gun that most of you guys will know. This is a Gen 4 Glock 17, so a standardized full-size pistol. And just to let you guys see how it compares size-wise, you guys can see obviously we have that five inch barrel, so it's a little bit longer in length. And then grip wise, it's a little bit thicker again with that large back strap on there. And then you'll see as we compare the bore access, the Canic is a touch higher than the Glock and the Glocks of course are known for having a nice little bore access. Uh, so that's how they compare in terms of size, but the weight really is the difference. The sun is going down and it is getting cold out here. So we will try to wrap it up relatively quickly. So we've covered most of the important details of the pistol itself in terms of features. Now let's go over some pros and cons. So first and foremost, Canik did send this out uh, for review here on the channel. So obviously full disclosure on that, they're not paying anything for the review, but we did get it in before the actual release date. And obviously it's been out for a while now as of when I'm recording this video and I didn't want to just release it with a few rounds through it. So this gun right now has about 2,400 rounds through it, way more than I normally do. And the reason for that is I'm actually considering it to become one of my home defense pistols. So that kind of tells you I'm a fan of it. Um, but at this point, like I said, 2400 rounds, zero malfunctions of any kind. We've put a number of different hall point rounds through it. We've got it loaded up with some Norma 108 grain solid copper hall points. We'll see how it does there with defensive ammo. Just fine. AAC 124 grain XTPs, uh, Winchester 147 grains, as well as uh, Federal HST 147 grain, all of them, zero issues of any kind. Of course, the vast majority of that has been minute ammunitions, 124 and 115 grain. Again, it has eaten everything flawlessly. So absolutely, I am a fan of that. Let's talk optics system here because we touched on it a little bit, but there are some details I do want to get into. I do like the adjustable sights. However, one thing I like about the new Canik uh, optic system is that they allow the uh, ability to co-witness your rear sight. Now, over the years, I've had different opinions on this and it's been based on viewer feedback, honestly. Um, I personally want backup iron sights. I still do to this day if I'm using a red dot on a pistol. That said, I've listened to a lot of your feedback and a lot of you guys don't. A lot of you guys have told me that you don't want to see your iron sights. You just want to see the dot. You don't want to have any clutter in your sight picture. So Canik offers the ability to have both. So just depending on which plate you go with and which optics combo you go with, 
you can do it either way. So I do think that is a win in terms of the design. Let's talk about some cons. <laughs> so one con is going to be the magazines. Although the magazines are a pro, the magazines that it comes with are Metgar. They're 18 round standard capacity magazines. It does come with the polymer base plate, but then also gives you the aluminum base plate. So my advice, if you guys are gonna run this pistol for any type of serious use or even competition use for that matter, is no matter what, definitely swap out to the aluminum base plates. And the reason for that is if you're using this magwell, you guys can see there when we grip it in there, imagine if you had a double feed trying to clear that. Obviously we haven't had any double feeds, like I said, it's been 100% reliable, but if you did and you were trying to clear that, you would have a lot of trouble. With the aluminum, you can grab it because it does have that ridge on the bottom. Hopefully we're rolling in photos that will let you know. But with the polymer base plate, you don't have that ridge and it comes basically flush there and there's just no way you'd be able to grip and rip the magazines out. My opinion on this particular gun, whether it be for competitive use, home defense use, whatever the case, I would like to see Canik offer at least one of their 20 round standard capacity mags for it. Because as you can see there, should you get a double feed in this configuration, obviously you have two more rounds, which is good too. But should you get a double feed in this configuration, you can easily grip and rip that magazine with the magazine well in place. So while it is a con, I guess we're listing it as, I just wanna see it as an improve. I would just like to see this come with it from the factory. It comes with two mags, if I didn't mention that already. And these are Mechgar mags. So top of the line, super, super high quality in that regard. Uh, pro and con of the gun is going to be the weight. So we already are obviously talked talk about it, but when you're talking about a gun that's 40 ounces or more, uh, a lot of benefits that you get for it are gonna be under recoil, right? So when you get on target, it stays on target as you're firing. Additionally, if you have to make a long distance shot, uh, especially for red dot, it becomes much, much easier to get stable with that gun that weighs a little bit more. The downside of a gun that weighs a little bit more is transitioning. So when you're moving left or right, or even up and down for that matter from different target sets, it's a little bit harder to slow down a gun that's heavier. So pros and cons there in terms of the weight overall. Uh, of course, a pro and a con is also going to be the price point. So. As far as I know, this is the most expensive gun that Canik has ever re released, rather. And Canik has a reputation for bringing in super high value options. Um, of course, the previous Palmer frame version was absolutely one of the most high value competitive offerings out there on the market for competitive shooters. Uh, of course, world championships have been won with this gun. So the gun is definitely capable of doing it with the Palmer frame, with the steel frame, probably even more so if you are in a division that allows for this type of weight. Accuracy on mechanics is phenomenal. These guns shoot as well as any gun I own, period. That includes like high-end 1911s and things like that. The accuracy is as good as you can get with a pistol, in my opinion. But talking about the price point, it's not cheap. <laughs> so while a lot of mechanics over the years have been somewhere in the four to $600 range, this one right now, I'm not sure on the MSRP, but I will tell you street price, I've seen it for around $1,200 for the Chrome version and knock a couple hundred dollars off for the dark side version with the nitride finish. So $1,000 to get into this type of pistol, up to $1,200 if you want that Chrome finish, which me personally, I want the Chrome finish. My opinion, Chrome is one of the best, if not the best finishes for firearms and firearms accessories. Um, but of course the nitride is still very, very good as well. So it's not cheap at all. It's an expensive gun. That said, when you compare it to guns that are in this category, it's cheap, right? So if you look at a lot of the race guns that are out there, uh, most of them are going to be $1,500 to $2,500 and up. So it's not uncommon for a factory race gun like this to come to market around $3,000. And guess what? They sell really well, <laughs> even at that price point. So this one here, as when I'm recording this video, it's mid to late March, and these things have been selling out constantly, and I see why. I think it simply is a phenomenal gun. There's a couple things I would change. Like we mentioned, I would use a different base plate. I might relook at that holster because the holster has bound up on me a couple times, but accuracy, reliability, shootability, it's phenomenal. Um, my wife likes it. My wife doesn't really like pistols. My wife likes this gun. Reason being, again, it just stays so flat when you shoot it due to the weight. And then of course the excellent trigger also helps. So 
I think that's all I have for you guys. Again, we're losing light quickly, so we will end the video there. If you guys have any questions, you can also always post them down below in the comment section. I will definitely stick around to check them for a few days after the video posts. Additionally, if you're not following me on all my various social media pages, definitely do so. Uh, if you guys think you're following me on a Mark Zuckerberg owned platform, double check that because they basically deleted all my pages and I have new ones because we don't stop, keep going. So the new ones are there, so check those if you guys are wanting to follow me on meta platforms. Additionally, if this thing goes on sale, if the ammunition goes on sale, any of these magazines, even the standard capacity 20 rounders go on sale, it will be in my daily deals email. That goes out every day as the name indicates and it has six to eight of the best deals that I find around the internet on everything that we talk about here on the channel. If it's in that email, it's the cheapest I know of anywhere on the internet on that particular day. So that way it saves you guys some time and hopefully saves you some money because I've already done the looking for you. So that is convenient for all of you. Please sign up with a non Gmail account that does help make sure it gets to your inbox. Additionally, if you guys like this type of video and you're not subscribed here, welcome please hit the subscribe button. And if you've already hit the button and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, make sure you sign up for my email at the website here on your screen. This is a totally different email list and this one has all of the videos since the previous month's email has gone out. It goes out once a month as the name indicates. And that way there's no big tech giant censoring your eyes from my content. And that is pretty much it. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.